In this video, you're going to learn how to find the sum of an arithmetic and a geometric series when it's written in this sigma or summation notation form. We're going to go through six examples together. I'll show you the ins and outs of how to work with these problems in this form. So let's dive into the first example together. So we're given this kind of strange symbol right here, which is referred to as the Greek letter sigma, and it represents the sum of a series. A series is a sum of terms. And so what you do is you start at this bottom index and you put this index into this rule or this formula to find the value of this particular term. So in this case, when the index is 1, I say 2 times 1 is 2 plus 5 is 7. That's the value of this first term. Then we go to the second term. So when i is 2, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 is 9 plus then I put 3 in and you keep working your way up sequentially until we get to the eighth term, which is the last term. So I'll put a few more in here just to show you. So 3 would be 2 times 3 is 6, plus 5 is 11, plus dot, dot, dot. Put in 8, we get 2 times 8 is 16, plus 5 is 21, and we add up all these terms together. Now sometimes you might have from 1 to 100. You wouldn't want to write all those out and have to add them up by hand. That would take too long. So what we do is we have some formulas for whether it's an arithmetic series or a finite geometric series, or maybe even an infinite geometric series. And we're going to be working with these formulas as we go through these six examples. But in this case, you can see that we're adding two each time to get to the next term. That means that this is an arithmetic series. And one other way to notice it too, sometimes students will say, well, Mario, how do I know that it's arithmetic? Well, one way is to write down a few terms and you'll see the pattern. You're adding or subtracting the same common difference each time. But you'll also notice that this looks very much like the equation of a line, like y equals mx plus b. It's going up with a slope of 2. That's your constant rate of uh, increase. So that's one way to kind of determine. But again, if you're not sure, write out a few of the terms. When it's arithmetic, we're going to use this sum formula right here. So it's n divided by 2. That means the number of terms in the series divided by 2 times the quantity of the first term plus the nth term, which is like the last term. So in this series here, we've got 1 through 8, that's 8 terms, divided by 2. The first term is 7, and the last term is 21. Now again, if you're not sure the first and the last term, you'd start with this index here. It doesn't always start at uh, i equals 1. It could be i equals 3, or sometimes you use the letter j or k. But this tells you this is going to be, when you plug this in, that's going to be the value of your first term. When you plug in this top number, that's going to give you the value of that last term or that nth term. So now if we simplify, 8 divided by 2 is 4. 7 plus uh, 21 is 28. Uh, let's see, this is uh, 80 plus 32, which is 112. So that's the sum of our series. Okay, for example number 2 now, same idea, except for notice that this is like an exponential equation. When it's in this form, a, b to the x, we notice this is an exponential equation. It's going to be a geometric uh, series. But again, if you're not sure, you can start at this bottom index. So if I put 1 in here, 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 1 half to the 0 power is 1. Times 10 is 10. So that's the value of our first term. Now again, remember the sigma means sum, so you're adding up all the terms together. Then I work my way up to i equals 2, i equals 3, all the way up to i equals 10, sequentially, in order. So the next term, when I put 2 in here, 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 1 half to the first power is negative 1 half, times 10 is negative 5. Let's do one more. If we put 3 in, 3 minus 1 is 2. Negative 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 fourth times 10 is 10 fourths, which reduces to 5 halves dot, 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 and it keeps going until we get to the 10th term. You can put 10 in, get the value of that, that last term. Now notice it looks like we're multiplying by negative 1 half each time, and you can see that that's your ratio. You might be familiar with uh, this explicit formula for geometric uh, sequences. See that quantity in parentheses, that r value? That's what we're multiplying by each time to get to the next term. But again, sometimes students just like to write out a few terms just to get a feel for the pattern. But if you recognize this formula, you can see what the ratio is, what the r value is. So when it's geometric like this, we're going to be using this formula right here for a finite geometric series. Finite means there's like a fixed number of terms. In this case, we just have 10 terms. If you saw an infinity symbol up here, then we'd be using this formula, although this only works if the ratio, what you're multiplying by, is in between negative 1 and positive 1. 
Okay, so in this case, let's go ahead and use this formula. We've got a sub 1, which is the first term, which is 10. 1 minus the ratio, which we said is negative 1 half. That's what we're multiplying by to get to the next term. n is the number of terms, which is 10, all divided by 1 minus the ratio, which is negative 1 half. Okay, I'm going to go to the calculator on this one, and let's go ahead and simplify this down. So we've got uh, 10 times 1 minus negative 1 half. I'm putting this in parentheses. You want to make sure you uh, take this as a group because you want to do the exponents before the subtraction. Uh, okay, so to the tenth, all divided by 1 minus, in parentheses, negative 1 half. Okay, so this is giving me uh, 1,705 divided by 256. So that's an exact answer. If we want to get it as a decimal, it's going to be approximately 6.2. 6602. Okay, just rounding a little bit. Let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do the next example. Okay, for this third example, what's interesting about this problem is that notice that this index is not starting at 1. We're starting at 5 and we're working our way sequentially up to 13. So that's interesting. Now, if I want to find the quote unquote first term, I would actually start with this index of 5. 3 times 5 is 15, 4 minus 15 is negative 11. Now remember when you're doing these problems, when you're substituting, you want to do the PEMDAS or the order of operations. So you want to make sure you key on, on, on that order. Uh, otherwise you get a different answer. Now plus, remember the sigma means we're summing up all these terms. The next term would be i equals 6. So if I put 6 in, that's going to be 3 times 6 is 18, 4 minus 18 is uh, negative 14. Okay, and then if I put 7 in, 4 minus 3 times 7, that's 21. 4 minus 21 is negative 17, uh, dot, dot, dot. And then our last term, 3 times uh, 13 is 39. 4 minus 39 is uh, negative 35. Okay, so now we're going to add up all these terms, not by hand, but using this uh, formula right here. Now, why am I using this formula? I notice it's arithmetic. I keep adding negative 3 each time to get to the next term. So when you add or subtract, that's called an arithmetic uh, series. And we need to figure out now to use this formula, how many terms are there in this series? Well, we could count 5, 6, 7, find out how many until we get to 13. But here's where students make a little bit of a mistake. They say, well, 13 minus 5, that's 8. So aren't there 8 terms? Well, there's actually nine terms, and I'll show you why. How many numbers are there from one to five? Well, five minus one is four, but obviously there's, there's five there, right? So what you have to do is you have to subtract, but then because you're counting the first and the last term, you have to add one more. So 13 minus five is eight, plus one more is nine. Okay, so there's nine terms. Again, you can count them if you want, but sometimes there's, there's quite a few, so it'd be difficult to do. And then we've got our first term plus our last term. a sub n is the last term. So we have negative 11 plus negative 35. So this is negative 46 times 4.5. Let me go to the calculator on that one. Let's see, 4.5 times negative 46 is negative 207. So that's the sum of this series. Now, the sigma notation, this is just like a very condensed way of writing all of those terms. So that's kind of a nice way to look at that. It's a condensed version of the series, right? Now for number four, what do you notice here? Well, again, we're not starting at an index of one, we're starting at three. Also, we're going up to infinity, right? So this is an infinite series. And notice that this is in the exponential form. This is gonna be a geometric series. Again, if I'm not sure, let me start by putting in some of these uh, terms. So if I start with three, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 thirds squared would be 4 ninths, times 2 would be 8 ninths, so that's our first term. Plus, now if I put 4 in here, 4 minus 1 is 3, 2 thirds cubed is 8 twenty-sevenths, times 2 is 16 twenty-sevenths, plus dot dot dot, right, so it keeps, keeps going. Now notice we're multiplying by 2 thirds each time, okay, so that's the ratio here, see the R value. And this one, because we're going to infinity, we want to make sure that the ratio is in between negative 1 and 1 so that the series converges, meaning it's going to gradually get smaller and smaller. It's going to go to 0. 
which is a lot, allows us to sum up all these terms. So using this formula now, uh, a sub 1 is the first term, which is 8 ninths over 1 minus our ratio, which is 2 thirds. That will allow us to find the sum. Again, 2 thirds is in between negative 1 and 1, so we can find this infinite sum. 1 minus 2 thirds, that's just going to be 1 third. And when we divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is 8 ninths times 3 over 1. We can do a little cross-reducing here, so that's 8 over 3 is the sum of our infinite geometric series. So let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do the last two examples. Okay, if you're getting the hang of these problems, go ahead and try number 5 and 6 on your own, and we'll go through them together. So for number 5, I'm noticing that this looks like an exponential function. It's probably a geometric series. And again, if I'm not sure, I can plug in a few values. So starting at this index of 1, when I put 1 in here, 1 minus 1 is 0. I want to make sure I do the exponential uh, exponents first before the multiplication. That's important. So 3 to the 0 would be 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So that's the value of our first term. Now when I put in the index of 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. 3 to the first is 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. If I put 3 in, 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 squared is 9, times negative 2 is negative 18, dot, dot, dot. Okay, now it looks like I'm multiplying by 3 each time, which coincides with this ratio right here in parentheses. And we've got how many terms? Well, if you start at 1, then that means we have 9 terms. If you want, you can use that trick, 9 minus 1 is 8, plus 1 more is 9, but if you start from 1, it's going to be that top number. And remember, it's geometric, so we want to use this finite geometric uh, formula right here for the geometric series. So our first term we said was negative 2. So the sum of the first nine terms, so negative 2. The ratio we said was 3. The number of terms n is 9, all divided by 1 minus the ratio, which is 3. Okay, so if we simplify, if you do this uh, by hand, make sure you start in the innermost parentheses, do the exponents first, and then you can you know, work your way out. What you don't want to do is like 1 minus 3 is negative 2 to the ninth power. That's, that's not correct. So I'm going to do this on the calculator, see if you get the same thing uh, that I'm getting here. So I've got negative 2, 1 minus 3 to the ninth divided by 1 minus 3. Okay, so I'm getting negative 19,682. Okay, for number six, last problem, uh, look what we've got. We're starting at an index of zero. We're going to infinity. It looks like it's an exponential expression there, so it's probably geometric. Uh, looks like our ratio is three halves. Okay, now remember when we try to find the sum of a geometric series and it's an infinite geometric series, the only way that we can find the sum is if this ratio is in between negative one and one. 3 over 2, that's 1.5. That's not in between negative 1 and 1, which means that this is actually going to be what we call divergent. There's no sum. Eventually, these terms are going to go to infinity, and you won't really be able to add them up. You're just going to get like an, an infinite number, basically. So in this case, we're just going to say that there's no sum. So it's a little bit of a trick question here. And, or you could say divergent. Okay, uh, the series diverges. And you got it. So if you want to learn more, not just about summation notation, but you want to know about how to work with the explicit formulas for arithmetic and geometric sequences, as well as recursive formulas and some word problems, I have a good review that I want to refer you to right there. Follow me over to that video. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you over there.